I, l- I love the premise of this show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. Course. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by nobody. We don't oh, have any sick. pre-rolls. Brought to, brought to you by us. Brought to you by us, uh, your favorite Brilliant Idiots, man. Thank you to everybody who's just been, uh, you know, listening to Brilliant Idiots. Yes. Uh, for the past decade. I told you we're gearing up for a launch. Yeah, we're going to yeah, yeah, launch in Officially January. Officially going to launch a podcast in January. Very excited baby. about that. Announce okay. it at least. We're going to act like the last 10 years didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> we well, already no, it do. did, but we were just getting ready. We're getting ready. It was warming yeah. up. 10 yeah. years of warm up to Ten finally hit the ground running yeah. uh, the way that we should. How was your week, man? It was good, man. It was also, it was sad. Uh, well, because, was sad. Well, because Izzy lost, Stylebender lost, but uh, it was also inspiring to see like how he lost. I thought that was... Like I, yeah, it was really cool. I learned a lot this week. I laughed my ass off with all of these people seeing you behind Joe Rogan, oh, <laughs> and like it looked like the arena was empty and you were still sitting there because you was couldn't believe it. Heartbroken, bro. <laughs> and they, yo, people on YouTube are amazing. People are like uh, uh, unconfirmed gay relationship between Andrew Schultz and Theo Vaughn. And they edited the video. <laughs> like, at, there was one point where I'm laughing. I tap his leg and they slowed it down. So it just looks like I'm holding his knee. <laughs> I got to get the video real started. But, um, but yo, it was really cool seeing the way that Izzy reacted to it. And um, it's just a loss in a combat sport. Yeah. Bro. Like, but he, now nah, he like specifically held his head high. And, and he also, he was talking about on Flager because we had on Flager and he was just like, listen, I've suffered like way larger disappointments in life. It's like you only have, you have a choice in life, what you're going to do with things. You can choose to move on. He goes, I'm yeah. going to fight this guy again and again. I know I can beat this guy. I don't want him to get caught up in that either. Though. That's what's scary. What's that? When you get so caught up in like, I guess, vengeance or redeeming yourself. Because he's lost this dude, what, two times, three times? He already? lost to him two times in kickboxing. Yeah. And then this one time in MMA. It's like, I... Yeah. Like, you don't get so caught up in trying, because technically you got to beat him three times in order to even the score. Well, <laughs> it's unless a, you like demolish him. It depends. If you beat him in MMA, yeah. you know, then it's 1 1. Okay. And I think Izzy showed some cool stuff here. Like, he got caught by the same shot that flatlined him in their last kickboxing fight, yeah. and it didn't knock him out. Yeah. So he took the power. So there's a lot of things, and he dominated him with the wrestling. People didn't know he had that. And listen, obviously, I'm biased as my boy, but like, it's just. The way that he handled the loss. He always handles loss well, though. But he hasn't lost. He lost one time against Jan Blahovich, who he was going up in weight 20 pounds to fight. Yeah. So it wasn't I liked like, his I liked his post speech after yeah. that one too. Yeah, yeah. It was just great. It's just an L. I think that people like um But it makes you go, okay, you can you can fail. Like it made me it really inspired me. It was like, listen, I if I'm not failing, I'm not trying hard enough, and you can handle failure with dignity. Right. Every goat, yeah. every greatest of all time has lost. Like, yeah. what are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Floyd Mayweather confuses people because he's 50 and 0. Yeah. So people think you got to be undefeated to yeah. be the best ever. Yeah. Tom Brady has lost, what, three Super Bowls? Yeah. Uh, Muhammad Ali lost. Muhammad Ali lost fights. Yeah. Michael Jordan lost a lot on his way That's to right. sheer dominance. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's just like, come on, you lose. LeBron and James has lost a lot. Yo, a cool thing. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. We don't too talk about a lot. Exactly. Too much, too for, much some. for some. Exactly. Too much for some. Yes. But but uh, he a cool thing happened, I think, and I think this was really cool. And maybe this is like the the Duval effect of me, where I'm always like looking at what the positive outcome from a even a sad situation could be. But um. But like he got all this love after the loss, and I think think what happens when you're like a dominant champion, and he hadn't lost at middleweight, is that like sometimes, and I'm sure maybe you even felt this in your career, where you feel like people's love for you is often tied to your success, and then when you lose, you actually find out that people love you because there's an opportunity for them to share it. You know what I mean? It's like all these people are reaching out, and all these people are saying how awesome it was that he went and took yeah. on a challenge and how awesome it was in the way that he handled it. And I don't know. It's like, I saw all this love for him. And I think it's a cool thing to kind of absorb in a moment that could be dark because it's like, Oh, these people aren't just riding because I'm winning. Yeah, They're yeah, riding because yeah. they actually like something about me. It's probably his humility. And it's probably because they've seen him lose before and handle it with grace. Yeah. Not to mention his MM fucking hate. Exactly. Ain't the guy. Is there an undefeated MMA fighter? I'm I'm maybe not like a not nobody that's been top. in in a while. Yeah, maybe not Ooh. a top. Yeah, I mean Khabib d- is not fighting anymore, but he hadn't lost. And uh, oh, Khabib never lost. No. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. 
Oh, listen, man, Izzy still Izzy at the end of the day. Facts. You know I mean? And by the way, every now and then, there's somebody who just always got your number. I think Izzy got this. You think so? I think he has I it. Don't, why does he need to fight him again? Why? It's been three times. After three, three is too much, bro. Different. After three, after four, like, I don't want to see fours and five. Like, you're talking about Fury Wilder. Again. If he I got, like, that. really hurt badly and, like, you know, something was wrong, he got concussed, et cetera, then I go, okay, what are we doing? But to dominate the guy, to be up 3-1, yeah. and then he got caught, and the guy has knockout power. The, he yeah. got caught. But um, I'm really curious to see what happens. And the thing about it is, and, and Rogan texted me this, he was like, listen, Izzy, the last really tough fight Izzy had was against Kelvin Gastelum. And he came back from that like a changed fucking man. He was like a superhero. He absolutely wiped out the division. He goes, this guy comes back strong. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen after this. Mm -hmm. Because I think Izzy's going to, Rogan's like, I think Izzy's coming back even stronger. Really? Yeah. Like, All right. yeah. So we'll see, man. We'll see. Well, salute to Izzy, man. Um, yeah. Somebody else, I don't know if he's undefeated or not. Who? Dave Chappelle? Dave, undefeated? bro. Did you watch the monologue? Yeah, I watched it. I saw it uh, the next morning. I, I was actually in Nashville all weekend. Salute to everybody in Nashville. I was there for the. Uh, we had a we had something called the Thrill of Possibility Summit. Ooh, um, with White Atlanta, isn't that what you call it? White Atlanta, you know. Yeah. And it was uh, the Black Effect Podcast Network and uh, iHeartRadio and Nissan. We flew out forty HBCU students, HBCU students that are uh, particularly in science and technology, everything in the STEAM field. Mm. And we had them. You know, we bought them out. Had a, a bunch of panels for them and food and drinks and all types of good stuff. So salute to everybody that came in Nash came to Nashville. So I didn't get to see it in real time because I was at uh we we hung out at my man uh Slim and Huskies, my my people spot Slim and Huskies. Cool. Good folks I met in Nashville. My man Mo and EJ. Cool. So I didn't get to see it in real time, but I saw it the next day. What were your thoughts of the monologue? Yes. I mean, he's just exceptional at talking into a microphone. His timing is incredible. I like the second half yeah. of the monologue better. I like I actually like the stuff about politics more than the 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 Kanye and Kyrie stuff. I did like how he brought it all back around, especially that yeah. joke about the chain. Yeah, yeah. It was that, a great was, that was a great callback. And also the honest liar stuff about Trump yes. is great. And and it yes. really taps into like why people did relate to it. You're yeah. exposing something that we've all felt, and he just said it right there. And it was yeah, I mean, he's just great at talking into a microphone. He's so relaxed, so calm. If you compare that monologue to the average person's monologue, even if they're a stand-up comedian, yeah. you will see this complete difference in just comfortability yeah. up there. And it, yeah, he's am, just a master at it. I am shocked at Dave Chappelle's ability to still offend. <laughs> because well, you, oh, because you, Because you know... He's probably going to say something that offends you. But it wasn't. There was nothing. I mean, I thought. I mean, was, not to us because we're not Jewish. But to, I even spoke to like Jewish friends. They were like, "Yeah, I don't think there." Jewish people are monolithic, though. Like, why do we keep saying that? Like you said, we always like that's like saying you're black friend. Like you know. What I mean? Yeah, but all black people think the same. Yeah, and, uh, but, it's, come on. but it's like the Anti Defamation League put out a statement. You but know? that's what the Anti Defamation League does, bro. You can say like you can say Jews are great at everything. They'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. We do not speak <laughs> about Jews in that way. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. I, mean, I will say this. I think that in moments like this, I I want groups like the ADL and other Jewish people who say that Dave is doing things like normalizing anti Semitism. Use these moments as opportunities to teach, because these are teachable moments. Because mm. I watch this monologue and I don't know what's anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? So if you're uh, uh, if you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna jealous. if you're gonna accuse somebody of being anti-Semitic, at least point it out so somebody don't make the same mistake moving forward. Yeah, I think that's that's smart. Also, it's like it's jokes, guys. We have to allow jokes to happen. And I think yeah. that when you have a certain amount of prominence, those jokes feel real. And I think one of the great things about uh Chappelle, the reason why he's been so beloved by so many different groups of people is that the punchline to his jokes are very cartoonish, yeah, they're yeah, very yeah, silly. Yeah. It's like it's the reason why the sketches were so profound, right, is because the actual funny part was so absurdist and ridiculous that like it was hard to be like, oh, that really hurt my feelings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And, um, you know, they, so so. In this perfect example, we had it uh, with with his speech. It was silly. The jokes he were making were silly. 
Listen, I'm with you, but I can't relate because I'm not Jewish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I you know, I I, thought I'm, he I'm, made the argument. He was like, there's a lot of Jews there. He goes, but there's a lot of blacks in Ferguson, Missouri. Doesn't I, mean that we I running. thought that like, was a fine point, you know, but he's once, making the argument for Jews there. Like, if anything, I would I would say that I if anything, I would say people would give pushback like, yo, why are you why aren't you being more edgy? The ed- you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like the yeah, edgy yeah, joke yeah, is yeah, yeah, is to yeah. prove why they do run Hollywood, not to prove why they don't. Or why they do run the media. Like this is I the wonder, opposite. I, of I wonder if that's the thing, right? When they say, you know, you're normalizing anti Semitism, I think it's that I'm but, sorry. But but no, but no. but what I mean by that is if you do anything other than denounce it, is it normalizing it? I guess, but like you also have to allow a comedian to be a comedian. Like he's going up there as a stand up comic. He's yeah. looking for the funny thing to say. And the funny thing to say is what is wrong. And the reason why we watch the things that are wrong is like we like playing with the things we're afraid of. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, like yeah. this is what humans do. We get comfortable. I've never been afraid of my penis, but continue. You play with that shit all the time. That's right. You've never been afraid of it? Never. What, what, what about when you had that skin graft and it looked like the monster from Stranger Things? That skin bridge was different. I think about that skin bridge often. I you do. had a demigorgon. What? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> that's some shit off House of, House of Dragons? No, 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 no. That's from <laughs> Stranger Things. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You had that Stranger thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess my point is like, this is what human beings do, right? Like, yeah. we're afraid of heights, so we skydive, we bungee jump. Right. We're afraid of death. So we celebrate Halloween. Yeah. We play in these environments that are very scary. And because we play in those environments, it allows us to feel comfortable with them. This is why comedies exist in the same way for years. Right. We're uncomfortable with certain topics that we know are very divisive. Right. And the masters of comedy play with those divisive topics so that we can all feel comfortable discussing them when those normal discussions that are not playful could really offend people, get you angry or get you canceled. I really wonder if there ever was a time where like comedy didn't offend. Like I could I even know I'm it's never been a time. No. Maybe the, maybe the devices that we use to complain because now you got to send tweets and stuff. We talked about this a little bit last week where people had to write letters and stuff. But I remember when Raw was like the LGBT community did not like Raw. It's I remember that. So, so no, which one was first? Delirious. Delirious. Yeah. yeah. So, so much so. <laughs> That when Re- reasonable, Eddie, yeah, so much so that when D- Eddie came with Raw, or whichever yeah. the second one was, it was Raw. Raw. Eddie had to talk about the backlash from Delirious in Raw. Yeah. So it's like, yo, comedy has always offended. Comedy has always made people uncomfortable, especially yeah. the people that are the butt of the jokes. One hundred percent, they were the butt of the jokes. And you have to, I mean, you kind of got to expect that, right? <laughs> and they are the best at backlash. <laughs> you kind of got you kind of you kind of got to expect that, right? <laughs> yes, you have to expect that and that's okay. And that's the only problem I have is comedians yeah. who don't no, expect why? it. Why why are people offended? Like you have to that's know right. that you have to know that's that right. there are going to be people that are offended that's right. unless you're just doing self-deprecating jokes, right? If you're only speaking about yourself and then talking about the embarrassing things you've experienced, mm-hmm. it's very hard for other people to be offended on behalf of you. Yeah. But if you're speaking about other things you're speaking about culture you're speaking about politics or religion or something like that yeah there are going to be some people offended that's why you got to allow people to be offended like yeah. that's okay yeah. it's okay if people have opinions it's not okay when they want to use those opinions to silence your ability yeah. to make jokes yeah right the one thing i love that dave said is he definitely when he said Kyrie got in trouble kanye kanye caused so much shit that Kyrie, Kyrie got, got in trouble, trouble yeah. that is true Kanye has created this whole climate. Yeah, but Kyrie would have gotten in trouble no matter what. I don't know if it would have been to this extent. I really don't. I think it's because of the climate that Kanye created. And y'all can say whatever y'all want. The climate that Kanye created was the climate of bigotry. And you know how you know it was bigotry? Because he said it. Yeah. He was in the Piers Morgan interview and he goes, I know I was being racist. Yeah. I meant to be racist. Yeah. When you insult the Jewish people and say you're going death gone free on the Jewish people, that is as racist as anything you say you've been through and any pain that you've experienced. It's the same thing. Racism is racism. And you know that, I think, don't you? Yeah, obviously. That's why I said it. So you said it knowing it's racist? Yes. I fought fire with fire. Okay. I'm not here to get hosed down. He was in the drink champs interview and he said, I can say anti-Semitic things. So he acknowledged that, he that was what he's being anti-Semitic. anti-Semitic. Yeah. So he's the only one that should really, really, really 
be getting yeah, smoked. I think they're going too far on on Kyrie for sure, especially. But it's because of Kanye. It's because yeah. of the climate. Dave and Kyrie are all suffering but also from the climate Ky- that Kanye Kyrie's created. Kyrie's a stubborn fucking idiot. If he apologized right there, said That's what he what said saying. was wrong, yes. it's over. That's what I'm he saying. He doubled down. He was being stubborn. He's like, you're not going to tell me what to do. Yeah. He did that classic fucking thing that like your girlfriend does when you know she's wrong in an argument. She's like, well, let's talk about what you guys are doing. It's like, you that's what gets you in trouble. I will say I saw you, I saw you with academics. I think the conversation was fair until you just threw out two words, bro. What I say? Wow pussy. Yeah, that's wild pussy. Out here calling Commenting wild is pussy. wild pussy, bro. Commenting on shit that got nothing to do with you is that's wild all we pussy. do for a living. Show we pussy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when you gonna realize we pussy, bro? When they when those dudes attacked you outside the fucking uh, breakfast club, you ain't fight them. I got the fuck on. Cause we pussy, bro. So what? Are we, what's the opposite of wild? We're, we're domesticated pussy. We're domesticated pussy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we some domesticated pussies out here. Oh, Come oh on. man, we're Come domesticated on, pussies. So you know <laughs> can we not be pussy, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What did you think about Chappelle saying that it shouldn't be? Because clearly you don't abide by any of this. But it shouldn't be this scary to talk about things. I will say that, like, comedy takes time to work jokes out, mm-hmm. right? And and a guy like Dave, who people are trying to record every single time he's on stage and, like, everything he actually says can make news. Yeah. You know, it's... I, I see how he could be scared to even play with certain topics or play with certain premises because the play initially could get you canceled because yeah. it's not worked out yet. It's not silly yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, yeah. is the concern. Yeah, yeah, I get you. You know, so I yeah. can see where that's frustrating for him. Yeah, I was reading something where it was talking about how dangerous it is now because you can't be, like you said, be in a comedy club, right? You could be in West Bubblefuck somewhere working something out. Yep. Somebody records you. That's now it. Now that statement is all around the world. That's it. Right? And, and, and to your point, you might not have worked it out yet, so it's still in like its rawest form. Yeah. So it might not even sound like a joke. Yeah. It is something people might take and run with it, and it might cause actual harm to people. Because that's what happened to the dude. Uh, God bless the people that got killed in, uh, what was that, West Virginia? Was that the University of West Virginia? Jesus Christ, bro. You getting all serious. No, bro. no, but be, but because the guy went to his father to tell him he was being picked on. Oh, no. And yeah. then the father pulled up? No, oh. the guy, the, 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 I don't know what the, I can't remember what, we can pull the clip, I, can't, I don't remember what the oh, father don't watch it. told the son. No, 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 the oh. father gave a statement. Oh. So okay. I don't know what the father told the, the son, but basically, you know, I guess he, whatever he told him, you know, didn't cause the son to do anything, I but pray other than future. go oh my God. shoot three people and kill him. I pray in the future my kids aren't bullied, man. That, that's gotta be, does that ever happen to your kids? Bullying? Did they get bullied at all in school? Nah. Because there's nothing you could nah. do about that yes, shit. Yes, it bro. is. I what the hell you mean? I imagine his kids getting bullied. Yeah, that's right. They, they got to deal with him at home. Bully in the yeah, world. Nah. I'm going to the school. <laughs> and doing what, though? Threatening to beat up somebody's daddy. Yo. That's what you do. You go to the but little you're too kid. rich to beat people up, bro. No, but you, it's a threat. The threat. <laughs> that little boy goes home or that little yeah. girl goes home. And yeah. says, Daddy, this guy came and said he's gonna beat you up if I don't leave somebody alone. Yeah, yeah but Charlotte, Charlotte, what happens when what happens when someone accepts the threat? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it was him. Uh, I still can't believe it now. He came to the house and he did his laundry. And uh, we oh, sat and the talked player, and he was right? doing real yep. well. I don't know what happened between then and now to cause to cause this uh to happen. He excelled in everything. Uh, he was everybody's friend. Everybody loved Chris, especially when he flashed his teeth, he smiled. He had some problems. Uh, when the last time I talked to him, he said uh, some people was picking on him or whatever. Uh, he didn't know how to handle it. I just told him, you know, just don't go to school. Don't pay him no mind. Do what you got to do. He was he was real paranoid when I when I talked to him about something. He wouldn't tell me everything. Uh, why did it have to get this far? I don't know what to say. Uh, Except uh, I'm sorry uh, on his behalf, uh, and I apologize. Uh, he's not a he's not a bad kid. He's, he really isn't. Um, I just don't know what what happened. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened to cause all of this. Something caused him to snap. That's why you got to leave people to fuck alone. <sighs> Talk space. Talk space feels a little like having a mental health professional in your pocket. 
Talkspace offers both therapy and psychiatry and being able to reach out to my provider anytime, anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling, knowing that if I need to talk with my therapist, I can just send a message from wherever I am. Working through things in therapy can be tough. But connecting with my therapist isn't, man. Y'all know I am a big proponent of therapy, man. Um, I think that you should get it any place, anywhere, and Talkspace provides that, okay? That's why I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. You can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you. Typically within 48 hours, you can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist. So it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Talkspace is mental health care that meets you wherever you are. It simplifies taking care of your therapy and psychiatry needs because it eliminates the need to commute to appointments, all right? You don't got to miss time at work. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to line up a child. You don't got to line up childcare in order to attend your session. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over 40 specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. As a listener of the Brilliant Idiots podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. You want to do Blue Chew shorts? Yo, Blue Chew, okay? Blue Chew. Listen, it's fall, okay? You know you're deep in fall. It's Thanksgiving coming up. Like, listen, we, we're going to be around family. It's time for you to really break it down. Like, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, ladies, ladies, you're going to your man's family, okay? You're going to your man's family for Thanksgiving, all right? Don't you want him to pop that blue chew, make you scream super loud, wake up the whole family just to let them know that you're mommy now. (laughs) You're mommy now, (laughs) right? You need to be screaming, (laughs) crazy, enjoying it, cursing, saying whatever the fuck you want. Yams, potatoes, ham, whatever. (laughs) You You need to be saying all that shit. And you can do it right now. Get your man, your man on it. Same active ingredients. It's inside Viagra or Cialis, but it's the Chew. It's the one we rock with. Bluechew.com, okay? You can get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You just got to use that promo code IDIOTS, and you get that right there. Enjoy. Peace. Let's get back to the show. Oh. Yo, uh, you got any church announcements? Yo, um, check out Izzy on uh, Flagrant. That'd be great if you guys do that. And Big then, Izzy. Uh, infamous um almost at uh, 10 million views which is absolutely crazy Ooh. so thank y'all so much for that that's going to be a huge milestone so keep spreading the word on that one and um uh, and yeah check so check out izzy and then uh check out infamous right there what about you man uh my church announcements is simple um first of all i want to salute to the samuel samuel goldwyn films you know um uh, earlier this year we I, I executive produced a movie called 88 um, which premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival and Samuel Goldwyn Films uh, just purchased that. So that'll be premiering. Whoa. Yeah, that'll be premiering on, uh, it'll be released in theaters and digital platforms uh, early next year. So salute to everybody, my man Brandon Dixon and everybody it, 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 that Congrats, contributed man. to the making of uh, 88. Um, salute to Aramose, the filmmaker. Um, and hell of a week. You know, new episode this Thursday at 11.30 p.m. on Comedy Central. This week, I know Godfrey is on. Oh, uh, David Frum uh, used to be with the Bush administration. And who else is going to be on there? Deny. Deny. I'm sorry, Deny. I'm just going to call you Deny. Oyoke from Black Panther. <laughs> I, got to, I got to learn how to pronounce her name uh, oh. by Thursday. But yes. Uh, Thursday night, 11.30 p.m., Comedy Central. Join us right after The Daily Show. Okay? Okay. Okay. Did you see Black Panther yet? Yeah, no. Did you see Black Panther, Alex? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I did. I really enjoyed Best it. Best movie of Marvel Phase 4 by far, right? Yes. Phase 4, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. What uh, Did you like it better than the first one? I actually did. I actually did. You know why? Can you tell me the premise of it? It's a, a, a grief. What? Grief. Grief? Grief is, is the premise of Wakanda for What do you mean? Grief is absolutely positively the, the premise of oh. uh, Wakanda Forever. The, the thing I liked about Wakanda Forever more than the first one is the stakes were higher. 
But but why? I mean, I can't tell you the movie, but the stakes were much, much higher in Wakanda forever. The stakes weren't as high in the first Black Panther. I got to disagree. Talk to me. Because that was the first, like, majority Black cast that Marvel ever did. So that could have flopped. And I ain't talking about no wokeness type stuff, Alex. I'm, I'm talking saying. about the plot of the movie. Oh, but I'm just saying the stakes <laughs> for the movie performing well. I think nah, was high nah. Oh, you person. mean the plot? The plot, yeah. Oh, you yeah. mean like that? <laughs> oh, I'm like talking about the plot of the well. movie. Yeah. The stakes were high. Yes. Now, you is it mean? is it true that that the the more or less like the plot is about um, Mexicans uh, trying to infiltrate a resource rich land and steal the no, jobs? No, that's not actually. Oh. It's actually more okay. so about the Mexicans and. The Mexicans wanting the black people to be aligned with them. And I, they, were they Mexican? They were Mexican. Yeah, they were? Yeah. yeah, the Mexicans wanting them to be aligned. Technically Aztecs, yeah. right? Aztecs, Aztecs yeah. yeah. Which are Mexicans. So, so Namor was looking for an alliance uh-huh. and uh, they couldn't get on the same page about the. They wanted to be an alliance. They wanted the alliance, but couldn't get on the same page about why, which I thought was very interesting. And I, somebody said that to me. They was like, why would, um, why would this country just protect uh, Riri Williams. Like, why would what, since when would a foreign country just protect somebody from another country? And I think that they forgot what Mbaku said in the film, and what Mbaku said in the film was true. He was like, "Yo, if we do this, if we give this country what they want now, what more would they keep coming back asking?" For? Ooh, that's the that's what people forgot. So that's that's why they put that hard line in the sand. But you know, I don't want to give too much of the movie away. Now, but I enjoyed it a lot. Now. In terms of like their defense, did they build a wall? Like, what, what were the things that they used to keep the Mexicans out? Did they build? A, well, no, they had. They definitely created a defense. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a. Yeah. It wasn't a wall. You know what's so interesting? What about you know, the, I, I don't want to say. I don't want to give the movie. I got. Yeah. You got to see the movie because there is something in there. <laughs> right? Did they take the kids and then put them in like cages or whatever like that? No, like, no, it, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Well. Technically, they did try to trap Namor. They Whoa. did trap Namor in something. Whoa. <laughs> what? Because they wanted minute. to dry, they needed to dry him off. Wait a fucking minute. No, they needed to dry him off. They had to dry him out. Was his back wet? <laughs> I mean, Alex, as much as that sounds like a joke, it's really not a joke. <laughs> I know. I know. That's I, what I'm like, God damn. It's I really mean, not. I mean, it's really not a joke, bro. Yeah, I like, mean, that's what kind of, that's, the, yeah. whole, the yeah. whole plot of the movie is jokes. Like you can yeah. make a lot of jokes from the whole. Yeah, plot. it's a lot there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot there. But Wakanda Febu is great. Uh, what is great. Wakanda's uh, foreign policy? Seems like they're not. Uh, they're not very accepting. Well, of they don't trade immigrants. They made that perfectly clear yeah. in the movie. Is it like Trump's paradise? Nah, isn't that kind of like not nah, too many black people for it to be Trump's paradise? Yeah, but like remove color. Uh, maybe no. It's like no, North, North because Korea. Well, it used to be maybe part one because they were they were definitely Wakanda first in Black Panther part one. They not like that no more. It's not Wakanda. Maybe is it still? You think it's Wakanda first? I don't think yeah. so. I think yeah, you Wakanda, saw in the beginning. It's like they like North Korea. Yeah, but with all and the like, technology, the money, it, and all that yeah, kind of leave stuff, leave it the fuck alone. Yeah, we won't <laughs> bother you. Yeah, because they definitely don't agree with trade yeah. because they're not giving away vibranium. And like she said, it's not because of how dangerous vibranium is. It's because of how dangerous y'all are. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's a pretty convenient excuse, if you ask me. <laughs> but they're not the only country with vibranium. Ooh. Come to find out. Ooh. You know what I mean? So Ooh. it's like, you got to see. It's a, good, it's, a, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. it. I thought the plot was good. You know, I like the previews before the movie, which is always important. Creed 2 looks great. Mm. Avatar Part Creed 3 looks Creed great. Three. Oh shit! It is Creed, Creed three. three, yeah. Creed three, boy, Creed. That shit make you want to get in shape like a motherfucker. Yeah. Like, my God. I mean, man. Yeah. When the last time we seen that many abs and pecs, bro? Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious, man. In yeah. one trailer between Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan, crazy. It's unbelievable. Crazy. But it's not worth it to look like that. That shit is mad dumb. Why? Why? Tell them about the stuff the doctor put us on. To? Oh yeah, we are gonna be on all that shit though. What do you mean? I mean, we got some shit. What? Don't worry about it. Y'all bro. about to get BBLs, bro? <laughs> nah. <laughs> what you even mean? better? Yeah. We're going to be on the shit that all the people in Hollywood are on. What yep. you mean? Now, don't worry HGH? about it. Nah, nah, no, bro. Nah, We're going to be on. That's whack. That's what just the regular pedestrians are using. Steroids? No, oh. bro, 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 bro. I can't talk about it right now. I already talked about the G-Wagons well, costing me what no the money and getting rid of that shit next year anyway. Tell me what the side effects are. Yeah, but it's you, look yeah. you look great. You look great. Your wife, your wife gets even more lucky. There's got to be something else. That's not it. Yeah. No surgery. See, they don't even know. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is not really? for it's not for pedestrians, bro. How much is it? 
Oh, what, what you worry about, bro? So hold on, I look like John. How much Majors? is the rest of your life? You look better than Jonathan Majors. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Taylor gonna be wild jealous. Taylor already wild jealous. You're already jealous. Yo, Taylor's such a hater, bro. Hater. Yo, we walked into the. We walked hater. into Slim and Huskies. Listen, we walked into Slim and Huskies. <laughs> and what happened? In Nashville. Yeah. And somebody was like, "Damn, that's thick." And and she thought they were talking about him, her. Him, her. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we are, we both looked at the same, we both turned around at the same time. Yeah. And per, dude was like, <laughs> you, Charlotte. To you. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. and then what with. happened with you? Nothing. She just sat there soaking, trying to order more protein at fucking, <laughs> and more carbs huskies. at dinner. Give me more husky. Yeah, give me more <laughs> husky. Damn, Taylor, that's <laughs> fucked up. You can't even just let him be great sometimes, exactly. too, if he has a Let me day. fucking be great. You see your guy, your guy's announcing his presidency tonight, bro. Who? Trump. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Oh no, he about to get washed. But it's gonna be fun. Why y'all think that? Why y'all how 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 right. much hope have y'all lost in Trump because of one midterm election? Nah, here's the thing. He's gonna win the Republican Party. There's no question. Yeah. And who can beat him from who can beat him from the Democrats, bro? Come on, bro. Joe Biden, Spry Biden, bro. You think I don't believe it. You don't think Biden got it? I don't know. I'm be honest with you, I don't know. What if they just say numbers back and forth to one another? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think who would win then? He'll lose he'll lose Biden around fifteen. You think? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you throw a comma at Biden, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the number of the comma, there's no fucking way in hell he's saying that shit correctly. I just don't like how y'all have given up on Trump so fast, bro. I think Ride with just, your guy. We've given up on presidents. First of all, what, what, what do you mean, my guy? <laughs> what, what are you saying, I, I, my guy? You like Trump. As a fucking comedian. Okay, but ride with him. I do ride he, with he him. He bombed one time, now all of a sudden. No, he didn't bomb. Them other bums in the party bums. Well, he co-signed the bums. I mean, that happens. Sometimes. If you if you do a Netflix special where you yeah. put four comedians up there and they bomb, yeah. it's all on Andrew Schultz. Is it though? Yeah. I don't know if it's on me. <laughs> what you I don't mean? think it's now on you me. sound like Trump. Yeah, I don't think it's <laughs> if on they me. do good, Listen, if they give do me good, the credit. That's my credit. But if they don't, then that's definitely there. <laughs> See, the guy has bars. What I hate about uh, what I hate about Trump is is the fact that all y'all love watching that motherfucker too. You send it around your group chats. Everybody has so I much used fun, to. and then publicly nobody says shit. What do you mean you used to? You just did three seconds ago. You said the funny thing he just said three seconds ago. That was funny. We like funny things. <laughs> no, We're human funny. beings. We funny. like funny things. That was funny. And when people make us laugh, it's hard to hate them. Yeah. That being said, uh, like the world is so much easier during a Biden presidency. We know he's a corpse, but life is just so much I, more I, calm. I think the world is easier during... Not it, it don't even matter if Biden's the president. It matters what the opposition is stirring up. So, so the reason I think that it, the world will be better if we get back to like regular conservative conservatism, like yeah. the shit that we're used to. Yeah. Like the Reagan, unengaging Bush. politicians. Boom. I don't need you, know what you mean? to be hilarious. You bring the temperature down a yeah. lot. Just You're not fanning the flames. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Even Bring even Obama was too cool. Like, don't even be that cool. Nah, not nah, cool. It's fine. Hey. It, listen, he's so cool that now we're really paying attention. We shouldn't know well, Obama about all the fanned the flame. Doing. Obama fanned the flames in another way. What do you mean? Because he was black. Oh, people didn't like That's him. That's what I'm saying. So he fanned the flames of a whole group of people that probably just hated him because he was black. What about just mediocre fucking presidents? I don't care if you're black. I don't care what you are. Just be there for four years. We got years. one now. Exactly. And look, listen, the economy's worse. People are out of a job. Everybody's getting robbed. But we're happy. But we're, we're happy. happy. <laughs> Bro, everything is worse than when Trump was president. And we're happy because we don't want the stress. We just want to oh, unplug. And that's what Joe Biden is. Yeah, the world is too political. He just allows you to unplug. With Trump, it's every day there's a fucking new issue about everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want that. Like I don't Biden, want, it's, yeah, he I don't goes want up that. there, he falls asleep. He tries to say that. a few fucking numbers. Dude, it's 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 no, it's just you. easy. I don't want that. I don't want to be back in that news cycle where every the the, the world is holding on to the president's every, every tweet. single word. I don't want that. Especially, I'm gonna tell you what's even more. If dangerous. Biden said, "Yo, I'm not gonna talk for the next four years," vote for him. Listen, imagine <laughs> this Twitter in a Trump era. This Twitter in a Trump era. People faking, you know, Putin tweets. Faking Trump tweets. Like, we're literally one too fake much, tweet away from a nuclear gosh, war, bro. Too much. One fake tweet away from a nuclear war. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you got the, if you got somebody like Trump stirring shit up and he's back in the White House and somebody just tweets from a fake Trump account, 
Russia, nuke on the way. Or North Korea, nuke on the way. We're literally one bad tweet away from fucking this shit being a wrap. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah, I don't think any of us want it. We just want calm. We want to be able to unplug. And that's the thing about Trump, which is so effective, is he's so entertaining, you can't unplug. Yeah. He's so good at getting your attention, you can't unplug. Yeah. But what do we actually want? We want to be able to unplug. We have a dead person that's president right now, right? <laughs> and as embarrassing as it is, as it globally, all of us like the temperature oh, so man. much more right now. And the problem is we also love distraction. I like it more when the red side simmers down. What does that mean? I feel like we were on the fast we're, we're on the fast track to fascism. One thing that the midterms gave me was just Oh a, God, a, I refuse a, to learn what that word means. But <laughs> I refuse. The, I the won't one thing learn the midterms fascism, gave me was a little bit of hope that you know what, people still care about democracy. No, they just don't they, they care more about abortion than the Republicans thought. A strategic error. Like Republicans but That's democracy though, because think about it. Six, ah, yeah, 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 you got you got a six three a conservative majority in the yeah, Supreme people Court. People want to get their scoops. Rights, scoops are, and rights then, are getting taken away. Yeah. Rights, yeah, you know. So well, we, yeah, that's the thing. Even conservatives want to be able to abort. I think we should just care about rights. Period. Sure. Like when we live in a country where rights just start getting taken away, that's the slippery slope for everybody. Man. Yeah, but how yeah. much more fun is it to just be silly? Silliness is great. Easier to be silly in a country that's at least stable. And it feels and I think more we're stable. I think we're getting back to stable. But that's the thing about stability. It feels more stable, even though all signs show we are not even close to as stable as we were during at least yeah. the beginning of Trump's presidency. Yeah. Like, not even close. I mean, the funny thing about American democracy, we're overdue to collapse, bro. Bro, why are you even saying that? So this is we're truth, Americans, though. man. Where are we going to go? <laughs> I'm not saying we're going anywhere. I'm just saying all democracies at some point in history no, 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 have collapsed, no, bro. No, 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 no. America's long overdue. I don't, why, what do you mean long overdue? No, Chris, no, 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 come on. No. Don't do that. 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 You, don't do that. you didn't bring him over here for the Jew talk. We're not doing this. We had Jew talk? <laughs> yeah, we had Jew talk. No, we didn't. Yes, we, we did. did. We did. We talked about Dave Chappelle. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. And you didn't even bring him over. You didn't ask what the Jew had to say about it. <laughs> That's how you knew that it wasn't offensive to Jews. Is there's a Jew in the room, you're like, we don't even need that. No, my me. take, listen, my, I told you what my take was on that whole situation. Use it as a teachable moment. Instead yeah. of just saying, hey, that's anti-Semitic, or you're normalizing anti-Semitism, let people know what they're doing wrong so yeah. they don't make these mistakes moving forward. Because I don't think anybody's intention is to hurt. Dave started it off denouncing anti-Semitism. You yes. know what I mean? He yes. started it off in that way, even though, you know, that was kind of a way to like, make fun of the performative nature of apologies. Well, 100%. You know, but he still did it, is, wh is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, what do you think it is, right? I what? found this very interesting. What? There's a couple in Arizona. Oh, boy. A husband. Oh, no. And a wife. Oh, God. Who were teachers. Oh, uh, the, the wife was an eighth grade teacher. The husband was a fourth grade teacher. Oh, goodness. Taylor Wood, just get away from the cliff notes. Yes, you did. You clearly did. Yeah. So, um, her husband is a fourth grade teacher. She's an eighth grade teacher. They both got fired because they have an OnlyFans page where they upload X-rated videos and they was getting it popping in the classroom. They was getting it popping in the classroom, uploaded the videos. They got fired. Uh, I agree that they should have got fired for bringing the school into it, mm -hmm. right? Like, if you're going to do it in the classroom, fine. But this is interesting to me because we literally had this conversation in Nashville over the weekend because one of the kids asked about social media in the workplace. And I was saying like, man, I never thought about it. I mean, for what we do, social media matters in our workplace. But if you're like a teacher or something like yeah. that, it's like, but and this is what I presented. I'm like, well, what if you're a model citizen at work, right? Like a yeah. model citizen, employee of the year, everybody loves you, but you go home and you got like a gossip blog page, like an alter ego, like you're an alter ego. You pop it, you bust it open on OnlyFans and you do this to make money. Should that affect your day job? If they know that it's you, yeah. Now, this teacher said she blocked everybody in Arizona, which I didn't even know you could do. She said she blocked everybody in Arizona and she only does this on her in her free time. Right, but she did it at the school. Did it, doing it at the school is fire. She fucked up I'm with, with the school. But also like, I think there can be a morality clauses 
in contracts. That's what like, I was wondering. We all have those in ours. Yeah. Uh, and I think like, for example, if you have athletes, right, they say in the contract, you're not allowed to go skiing or snowboarding. It's too dangerous. Yeah. Right. So I think as a teacher, you could say you're not allowed to do porn because these kids look up to you and maybe there's going to be some girls that really look up to you and admire you and then say, hey, this is what I'm going to do when I'm older because this person that is my guiding light also does it. Is OnlyFans considered porn though? I mean, if you're fucking, <sighs> if you're fucking. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if they was fucking or not. They just said X-rated videos. I'm assuming there was some penetration happening. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to. So you don't want this from your that. teachers? No, I don't want. No. Okay. No. What? What the fuck? What's wrong with these teachers? So what job is this cool to what, be able Al, to do? Al is a fucking. <laughs> oh, um, you are putting this like stink on people doing OnlyFans. Yeah, you don't know what is... her vagina smells like. <laughs> nah, yeah. that's that so disrespectful. It's a. It's a profession that people do. They, no, they, I'll, I'll put a stink on it. I'm fine with that. But but to, to Alex's point, OnlyFans, like, to the moral clause thing, right? I will shame that. I will. I'm, oh, I feel comfortable shaming. OnlyFans, well, a lot of this new technology and these new platforms aren't written into these contracts for these historical institutions. Like yeah. schools didn't know OnlyFans was going to come. And she said she did it to make extra money because she can't make enough money as a teacher. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think other I than the know, classroom, I mean, bro, I don't think I don't see what the issue is. Other yeah. than the other than them doing it in the classroom, I don't see the problem, bro. I don't want my teachers. I don't want my kids' teachers having OnlyFans. I don't want it. Really? Yeah, I haven't thought of like the smart reason why, but my knee jerk reaction is, yeah, don't teach my kids and suck cocks on the weekend. What if it's no fuck? But she's gonna suck cocks on the weekend regardless. Yeah, but and, not, and not her on husband. video. Not on video. What if it's not? Uh, porno. What if she's just like showing her feet or something to make extra money? I just don't. I, I don't know. I want you to inspire my daughter to go out there and yeah. get a job, be an educator, be an engineer, be a doctor, or something like that. Not just show m her feet on Instagram. I don't Damn. think there's any parent that would be proud of their kid doing that. But now you hating on all the boys in the class because you remember that pretty teacher that you had back in the day. Oh, one hundred percent. Crazy. Had one hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's wild. Yeah. That's distracting as fuck, Alex. You're I mean, sitting in the classroom yeah. watching the teacher, and you're like, "Oh shit, that's what she squirted at, son." Yeah. Don't put your hand right there. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a little bit much, bro. Yeah, it's too much. You can't bring it into the school. I guess what you do in your private time is fine, but if you're monetizing and you're putting it on the internet, then it just affects the school. It just affects the learning environment. Yeah, no, I don't want to see that shit. I, I mean, hey, I, hey, hey. Also, let's pay teachers more. Pay fucking I'm teachers like, more, Like, bro. two things can be true. Like, I don't want you to have an OnlyFans, and I want teachers to get way more fucking money. I would love that. And her alias was Chloe Carter. Oh, wow. She had an alias and everything. She got ratted out. Somebody told on her. But t t t t they shouldn't have been doing it in the school. No. You fucking in the school. You bring in the school into it. You bring in the class into it. That's where the problems come into play. But, man, man, this is a really tough spot to be in. Like, I yeah. mean, is it that tough? Just like, hey, teachers, you can't do OnlyFans. Sorry. But teachers, I need to make more money. Well, I mean, if you're doing OnlyFans, you should, that should be your only job. You think so? <laughs> right? Like, I, yeah, I, I strip on the side. Like, no, like, but, once but, but, you yo, do that, that's your fucking main job. mad college students do that, they strip to make ends meet through school. That is the biggest lie in the history of stripping. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, I know a bunch of them. I knew a bunch of them growing up. No, I did. I did. No, there's some Way strippers that take like a community college course, but it's not like every girl that's going to fucking UCLA oh, no, not every. is also stripping. No, no, not every, but I know, yeah. I know, I, I know some, like, I know some real life diamonds from Players Club, bro. Straight up, who used to strip, you know, now they do their thing in like different, like media or lawyers or whatever, like they really. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Nah, 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 I'm nah. glad that they did that. 100%. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Oh, y'all people disgust me, man. What is this? The people who taped take off funeral. Y'all fucking disgust me. What do you mean, taped it? Like, like, because they had an open funeral, open to the public, but they had a request, and the request was, please don't record the service. You know what I mean? Mm. And I was told that they did take some people's phones uh, at the event, like they do at the comedy shows, but I guess a couple of people snuck their phones in, and I just think that's whack as shit. You know what yeah. I mean? I think it's whack just because why can't y'all motherfuckers just listen? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, it, it, like if you if you're that selfish to go to a funeral, and you just gotta tape Offset talking, or you just gotta tape Drake talking, or you just gotta tape Quavo talking. You know how selfish that is. You're only doing that for your social media. You're not doing that for any other yeah. reason. You're making somebody else's funeral about you. Yeah. If you want the funeral to be about you, guess what you gotta do? Yeah. Die. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm serious. Yo, if you, Charlotte, calm down. That's a nasty conversation. That is not like. nasty, bro. Bro, I'm just saying. That's a nasty conversation. Bro, you know how yo, right you know there, what kind dude. of ego maniac you got to be to go to somebody's funeral and make it about you? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's the funeral, yeah, bro. You're right. You're like, right. come on, man. Yeah. I guess whack as fuck. Yeah. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Oh, what did Twenty One say exactly? Yeah, this might be blown out of proportion. He said, 21 said, I don't feel like he's relevant. I just feel like he got fans. Let me hear the audio. They're all talking over each other. That's what Clubhouse is. Taylor said, they're all talking over each other. It's Clubhouse. Yeah. Things, though. What y'all saying? Relevant, relevant though. Man. I don't feel like he's relevant. I just feel like no, he's got no, they, none of them are relevant. Man, I don't feel like I'm relevant. I don't feel like I'm relevant. Who's you rapping? Kane dropped the project and that shit was ass. Hold on. Why is Who's you rapping? Kane called it straight. One mic. One mic. One mic. One mic. No, no, no. One mic. One mic. No, bro. No, no, he's not. He's not relevant. He just has a loyal ass fan base. Thank you. He just has a loyal fan base. That that and he still make good ass music, but it don't like have a core fan relevant. Base, right, what what what? People's though. What y'all saying? Relevant though. Fans. I don't feel like he's relevant. Okay, uh, it's listen. The word relevant. I'm going to defend Twenty One here because I think okay. I do understand what he's saying. I think he's using that word in terms of like affecting current hip hop music and culture. Right. The songs that Nas is producing, maybe going on the charts or you hear on radio, you hear at the club, mm -hmm. you hear at the strip club or something like that. Like, I think what he's trying to say is he's not a uh, prominent artist currently, but he said he's an amazing rapper and he has a loyal fan base that loves hearing his rap. So the word relevant s being not relevant sounds like a real fucking diss. And I think that that was maybe the worst word to use to make that point. But I don't think Nas would agree. I don't think Nas is going, oh, yeah, I'm a top 40 uh, charts rapper right now. Every album I put out, that shit is going crazy. I think that if I'm 21 Savage, um, and I love 21 Savage, you know what I mean? But I don't think relevant is the right word exactly. to use with Nas. I think Nas is classic. I think Nas yeah. is legacy. I think Nas is icon, you know, but he's definitely still relevant because he's been relevant for 28 years. That's why the word is wrong, but I, you understand, like, what is the right word for that? He's not... Um... I, I Listen, he, he put out an album Friday. It's his fourth project with Hit Boy, King's Disease 3, and they're discussing it on Clubhouse. So so, so how is it not relevant? Sure, but you know not, what I'm saying? Like, but, they're discussing Nas. Yeah. But you remember, like, when we were growing up and Nas' album drops and then the world stops. Did it? Or at least in New York. I don't know. I mean, like... I don't remember. The, I mean, we, I love Nas. World stopping. I mean, people. The would, hip hop yeah, world, yeah. like you know. Every time I yeah, I, I, I pay attention now though. I was work me and my dude, me and my cousin Prime, I'm working out the King Disease Three yesterday. I just, I, I, I think would, there's a difference. I, I, guess, yeah. I would rather have the 28 year career. I would rather have the 28 year career. There's no question. You look at Nas's musical catalog and you look at his investment portfolio. Oh my yeah, God. It's killing it. I mean, God. Jesus but no, 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 that, that shit relevant. His investment portfolio is beyond relevant. Very relevant. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. Nas invested in Ring early I just on. don't like, know if 21 was trying to like insult Nas as a rapper. He said he's a great rapper, but yes, the his effect on rap culture is different now than it was back in the day when he was more prominent. The word relevant is going to seem insulting, and I understand why people, you know, kind of wrap themselves around it. But he calls him an amazing rapper. He makes amazing music. He compliments him. He's yeah, not saying yeah, that yeah. the skill has diminished in any way. It's just how many people are consuming it has changed. Yeah, I just don't. I, I mean, when you say somebody's not relevant, like it, it, to me, when you say somebody's not relevant, it's like what? Because he's not the algorithm of the day. Do you know, that, what yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. He's not the current algorithm of the moment. But that's the beauty of having a loyal fan base is that you can continue to put out your art even if you are not that's right. part of the algorithm. Like Nas is going, him and Hitboy are going to do about 40, probably. Yeah. 40,000 records independently. Beautiful. They're not signed to nobody. Beautiful. Like they're really, Nas is just doing this art with Hitboy because he really appreciates doing the music. It's great. You know what I mean? And once again, his investment portfolio. Crazy. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he got Please. in on all this tech stuff. Uh, Google. He's been a part yeah. of $2 billion acquisition, bro. Yeah. Like, go just Google what Nas is doing. And once again, I love 21, but man, the goal, and, and all of these guys like 21 got pressure, and I'll tell you why. 
the people who came before them, who have been, who, who we consider legends and icons, they've been in the game 30 plus. Mm. Like really, the Snoops, the Jay-Zs, the Diddy's, yeah. the Dr. Dre's, the Nas's. Yeah. Like, you know, even the, even the just go down south, the T.I. T.I.'s been in it for like 20 and some change. Ludacris. Yeah. All of these Gucci men, these guys have been around. Jeezy, these guys yeah. have been around for 20 plus. Are you going to be here in two decades? That's different, yeah. bro. Like, that's what everybody should be aiming for. It's about the longevity, man. It's about the yeah. the, the, the consistently great. Because you're only going to be that red hot, that white hot thing once. You know what I mean? You think you'd be the, more, the white hot thing more than once? I think it happens. Really? Drake's the only one who's kind of, he's proven that wrong. I don't think Drake's been white I hot. Also, uh, wait, <laughs> he, hasn't been, he hasn't been white hot for what's, what's white a hot? decade. White hot is, white hot is, uh, 50 Cent. Uh, get, get Rich or Die Trying. Or, or Drake, uh, first two, three albums. White hot. He ain't been think, that, and and he's he's consistent. I think White Hot. I understand kind of what you're saying. Maybe is uh, White Hot also implies new, yeah. Right? There's an excitement yes. about the thing that's new. Yes. Whereas, yes, Drake has been at the top of the game for over a decade, but he's not new. Yeah, that's right. But to me, I still look at it. It's like, like it doesn't get any bigger than Drake. So whether you're fucking White Hot or not, you are the top of the game. Yeah. Like who's bigger than Drake? Uh, I mean, in it, rap, hey, it depends, right? I mean, I mean, dude, no. I mean, when Kendrick comes out, he shuts shit down, bro, bro. No, no, no. no. Let's yes, not he do does. This. Come Let's on, stop, man. Charlotte. Kendrick got to pull a surprise, Kendrick. bro. All respect to Kendrick. All respect to Kendrick. Kendrick got to pull a surprise. Stop, guys. Kendrick what, what, comes what, what, out and wins every Grammy that's out. Like, what are y'all talking about? Stop. What, what are you talking about? I Yo, don't hear anyone Kendrick talking about his last album that came out. No he's one. on tour, killing it across the globe. Have you? Did you see his? Am- Yo, Kendrick. Yo, Kendrick literally vanished on stage. <laughs> okay, show. <laughs> Bro, um, vanished. No, no. St- I'm like we're right talking now, about maybe listen, one and two. I'm right not now. here. Like, like gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Kendrick yeah. is Kendrick, bro. But no, no. Okay, two things can be true. We can all acknowledge that Kendrick has one of the coolest live shows that's out right. Unbelievable. Now. Like so okay. intricate, artistic. Unbelievable. He really cares about not only the album he's putting out, but like the live show experience. It's like really fucking beautiful. And phenomenal catalog. Oh, unbelievable. No, no, no. The There's guy no hasn't question. missed. But that's There's no saying. question. Talk about one and two, but I still just think when Drake, Drake is, I don't know if it's in one and two, the bro. world stops. Like everyone listens to the album. Everybody. Eh. Dude, Drake is on a different level, man. I'm sorry. And it, look, eh. what, you don't think that Drake is bigger objectively? <laughs> really? I mean, I don't know, Yo, you bro. know what this feels Kendrick like? ain't no slouch, You know what bro? this feels like? This, this feels, feels like feels not... Like you. No. <laughs> Kendrick ain't no slouch, bro. This feels like Nas this and Jay-Z. Lamar. Do you remember when Nas and Jay-Z were kind of like, who's the king of the city? Do you yeah. remember that happened? Yeah. And like... The gap was way wider between Jay-Z and Nas. No, back yes, in the it di- was. Bro, I'm telling not you. Not lyrically. I'm saying in New York. I'm saying in but, New York. But even as... Not as artists, but 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 success-wise at the time, the gap was That's really, really wide. That's not how really it felt wide, in New York. Bro. It's not how it felt in New York. Jay-Z was 5 million records sold. It's not how it felt in New York. <laughs> because New York has so much love for Nas, right? Yeah. And I think I think if you look at Nas, Nas is like in the Kendrick space and Jay-Z... You're saying, you're saying that. You're Drake saying space. Nas had so much love for... I mean, uh, New York had so much love for Nas. But Jay had to kind of like resurrect the feeling. Like, remember, he was saying Nas was done. Oh, but that's later on. I'm talking no, about. No, this is when at the start of the beef. That's how the beef started in Takeover. He said that. Like, yo, you one hot album every 10 years average. Like, yeah. You had a spark when you started. Now you just garbage. Well, yeah. And then that he was lit the a consensus fire. for a little bit. Then he lit a fire. That was the consensus for a little bit. No, that's true. That's true. Because what is it? The first one is, uh, it was written. Illmatic. Or, wow. Wait, what? Illmatic. It was Illmatic. Then. The better album, it was written. It was written. Then he had a couple ones I am that was were great. not as... I Am was great. See, that's... I God, it's so weird how we remember stuff. I remember, like, the first two being fire. I Am then, was like, great. And then, like, third and fourth. Fourth was... Ugh, that was Nostradamus. Fourth was... Ugh. And I heard even I Am was, like, nah, like not I well am. received. And then fifth was, I what, am had Still Matic? Now on there. There was a couple. But I Still Matic was fifth? Still Matic was after Jay's uh, put that... That spark him. Because that shit was crazy. Still, Still Matic was, fire. was fucking Still Matic was fire. Still Matic was fire. I'm just saying, I don't think that I, I think Kendrick is is big, bro. No, no. Kendrick we all agree massive, he's huge. Bro. I think Al said we're talking about one and two. He's absolutely massive. I don't know if it's one or two. I, I think it's like just like some shit in your beard. I think it's like one A. Oh my cause I'm sucking wild dick Whoa. right now. 
Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> some wild, unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to stop yourself from, yeah, from right. sucking wild cock. Yeah, like, yo, 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 come off your Kendrick yeah, stick real quick. <laughs> I know somebody out there riding in the car like, yo, get off. Yo, 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 you riding Kendrick wild hard right oh, now. Oh, that's why he said it. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know why he's talking like this right now, bro. That was great. Maybe Chico was right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you gotta Reddit yourself. Yo, you gotta Reddit yourself. <laughs> okay. All man. right. What else we got? Bro? What else we got, Taylor Gang? Salute to Billy McFarlane, man. Firefest. Man, he it, making a comeback. Yeah, but everybody focused on the wrong things, bro. Which is, where's Andy? So I need an assistant. Where's Andy, bro? I need an assistant. We ain't seen or heard from Andy since Andy said he's out here willing to suck dick for, for water, water, bro. bro. You know what I'm saying? For water. Billy called and said, Andy, we need you to take one big thing for the team. And I said, oh my gosh, I've been taking something for the team every day. He said, well, you're our wonderful gay leader and we need you to go down. Will you suck dick to fix this water problem? And I said, Billy, what? He said, Andy, if you will go down and suck Cunningham's dick, who's the head of uh, customs, and get him to clear all of the containers with water, you will save this festival. And I literally drove home, took a shower, I, 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 I drank some mouthwash. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really, and I got into my car to drive across the island to take one for the team. And I got to his office fully prepared to suck his dick. To suck his dick. Like, who, what, is, what, are, what are people on your team doing? The man more from your not team, that. bro. Not that, bro. Huh? Not that, bro. They, 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 you need an Andy. I give these motherfuckers water every day. I, I, I bet you. <laughs> for free, bro. I bet you Andy for is somewhere free, right bro. now being an asset to somebody's team, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Andy, if you're listening right now, I need you, bro. Word up. Andy's somewhere on somebody's team keeping his mouth closed until he needs to open it. And when yeah. he opens it, shit fucking happens, bro. Shout out to Andy. I thought this was a great idea. Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield partnered up with the Ear Edibles because when I first saw this idea, I thought it was fucked up that Mike Tyson was doing this because it's not his ear. It wasn't his ear that got bit. Was it? What was it? <laughs> what do you mean? Man? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean, man? Mike bit Holyfield's ear. Oh, oh, but it was an ear that got bit. Yeah, but it's not like you got to. It, it would it would only be right to bring Mike into it. I mean, bring I mean, a, bring a band into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm fine. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, people need to take notes, bro. Like you know what I mean? If a body part helps relax you get to and a, take notes. Word. <laughs> if a body part helps you get to a certain point, bomb. I mean, yeah, having a vander there is fire. Come for on, it. man. Yeah, come on, man. Nah, I like that. What else we got, Taylor? Huh? Huh? What is this uh, Odell Beckham Jr. thing? Did you, re you read about that? I did, I did. What is the deal with that? Um, Odell is suing Nike for $20 million. He's saying that Nike did not honor its commitments. Uh, I wasn't aware that uh, uh, Odell was a Nike athlete and brand icon. In fact, I think they said he was the first. And they said that he kept his, he kept his promise and fulfilled his obligations to the brand. But uh, Nike has not fulfilled theirs and he said in 2017 his deal with nike was supposed to be over and he wanted to sign with adidas who offered him 47 million and he claims nike promised to match the deal to keep him but that fine print said otherwise whoa uh i, I mean i don't think that no lawyer is going to sue nike yeah for 20 million dollars if they think they don't have a case wait you think yeah, I, I mean, I don't think no lawyer would even take this case if they don't think they had a case. I think they're just trying to settle. There's a huge dude that's going to put a stain on the brand by complaining that bro, Nike there, fucked there, him there, up. There's, there's, no, there's nothing y'all can do to Nike, bro. I see people even saying this, and, and I, I, I respect it, you know, so my man, my son, my son's calling for a boycott of Nike because of the Kyrie Irving stuff and this and that. Bro, it's, there's, we're not doing it, bro. Nobody, it's just not happening. You know why it's not happening? Yeah. We all know how Nikes are made. Yep. Would you, you, would you want to explain or you want to give this to Chris? Is this... No, I... I Chris, you want to rep for your people real quick? I, I, I don't China. know. I don't know how they made, bro. What? I don't know how they made. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to say? I don't know Why? how they made. Why? <laughs> I don't know how they made. Chris, could you come explain real quick? I think quick? they're made by good Christian Americans. <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> That are paid about? a livable do you have? Do you know any information on this, Chris? I think they're made very cheaply. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nike can do no wrong. 
<laughs> what do you Nike mean? Nike has hardworking man? feminists making their shoes every single day. Okay? With gender neutral bathrooms and pronoun announcements. It is one of the most woke companies in the world. And these sneakers are made. Nike got sweatshop, bro. Whoa, dude. <laughs> what do Whoa, you mean? Dude. <laughs> Come on, you man. Mean? You don't know that for sure. It's the truth. Right, How Chris? do you know they're a sweatshop? I don't think they're all in China. I think they're spread out throughout Asia. I think there's some in Indonesia, some in China. But Look yeah. at that. The stain of forced labor on Nike shoes. I mean, how are they forced? If they Are they making money? Who, what do you mean? I mean, are they getting paid? No, I don't I don't think so. Not like yeah, they get paid, but not. Yeah, not 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 no, not for the conditions from what I was told. My point is there's a lot of other reasons that you can get to the root of boycotting Nike. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of reasons you could say, "Hey man, I'm not rocking Nike's You're no You're saying more. Nike shouldn't take moral uh moral high ground. High ground. I don't think they are. I'm saying I don't think people should take moral high ground in regards to what they want to boycott Nike for. I think companies should just be honest and be like, "Hey, listen, we have to do what we think is best for our company." Yeah, yeah, and yeah. aligning ourselves with someone who is saying bigoted shit or promoting bigoted shit makes us look bad, so we have to separate ourselves. That was performative of Nike though. Because Nike already had announced earlier this but year that they were severing ties broke. with Kyrie, though. Oh, they did? Yes. They announced earlier. Remember Kyrie went on the, the tangent against them on uh, social media because he said the sneakers were whack, blah, blah, blah. And this so guy. then Nike put out a press release. That was like back in March or May. Yeah. One of the months that began with him. And they was like uh, that they probably wasn't going to fucking keep the relationship going. Yeah. After after this, this shit was up. So it's like, yeah. that's performative. Yeah. I mean, don't you think the Nets owner is the same way, though? Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. 100%. Everybody's trying to get their licks. That's the pro that's the only problem with the Kyrie situation is like a lot of this don't have, have ha a lot of this doesn't have to do with what Kyrie just did. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is a lot of shit prior. I mean, I'd be pissed at him too if I was the Nets owner. And if this is a chance to call in the bill, then That's all it is. Yeah, yeah you know. That's yeah. all He's it is. He's fucked that team up. That's all it He's is. He's fucking up the bag big time for the Nets. That's yeah. all it is. 100%. What else we got, Taylor? We got some uh, asking idiots. Some asking idiots. Diddy is out here paying Marcus a thousand dollars a head. Go salute to Marcus. Marcus is a phenomenal barber, by the way. Well, yeah. Let's dollars. see. Asking idiots. A thousand dollars for a haircut, son. Oh, this is a good one. JLY says, Do you remember when you realized you were better than the average person at what you do? Uh no, I don't remember it. Really? Yeah. Like, do I remember this moment where I realized it? What does that mean, the average person, though? I guess you mean like the average, I guess would be like the average comic or the average radio personality or... Like, do you remember the moment where you were like, yo, I'm actually good at this? Yeah. Actually, no, I do remember that. Yeah. I always thought I was better than everybody. That's the radio. thing. That's the thing. But you I wasn't, though. Ooh. I thought I was, but I wasn't. Ooh. I thought I was, but I actually wasn't. And then when did you realize you were? Uh, when I actually learned the basics, when I actually learned all of the things that program directors had been trying to teach me for years, but I was too hard headed and uh, sucking my own dick. To, <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> and who taught you that? Which <laughs> program attention. director was able uh, to I like, mean, no, it's the, what it is when you, well, you know what? I think the first one was, uh, it wasn't the first one to break through because George Cook broke through. Salute to my guy, Big G. Big G broke through because Big G wanted me to have a morning show at night. Um, Mike, I'm, cause I've always been a listener. It's not like I don't listen. You know what I mean? I just always thought I was better. It's like one of those things where somebody can tell you something like, ah, okay, cool, whatever. I'm gonna still go do me. But then when you yeah. actually do like that small and thing. And then it improves. Like, oh shit, that well, did like, work. What was something they told you? Um, I remember Chris Connors, salute to Chris Connors at Howard 039 in Columbia. He told me, because I, I always love to take phone calls. You know what I'm saying? So he, I would open the mic. I would open the break and be like, Hot 103.9, whatever, whatever. And I'd do my break. And then I would go to the phone call. But I would start the phone call the same way that I would start the break. So it would be like, Hot 103.9. So it's like I'm doing it over. Like It's like it's like when we start the show and be like, yep, Charlamagne the God. Yep, and the show is. Like we do that once. You know what I mean? But it, for me, I was doing it twice because of the phone call. And I remember him just saying, when you do the phone calls, just take out the intro. Cause you're already, and then you're already talking. The yeah. He was like, you can just go to the caller and people will think the calls are live. Literally. And I did it and I'm like, oh shit, he's right. So it's just like that, those, like one little 
thing like that or like uh I'm in uh, Big G. I didn't learn this till my next radio station, but they would tell me stop screaming. They was they literally I'm, I and I never forget one of the consultants was like, "You sound like DMX. You need to sound like LL Cool J." <laughs> like, why the fuck would I want to sound like LL Cool J? You know what I mean? Like, because at the time, you know, it's 2001, it's DMX, hey, you know, charged I'm up. like, but he's charged up. But all he was trying to tell me was, you got to have a conversational tone. Mm. LL has a conversational tone. When LL's rapping, he sounds like he's talking to you. He's not screaming at you. And it's just like, oh. So, yes, those little tweaks helped me to become an even better radio personality. Yeah. So, even though I thought I was better than everybody else, and I probably was skill wise. Yeah. It's just those little adjustments that made me that much better. Can you listen to your old comedy or you listen to you on like Wendy or does that make you uncomfortable? Now? I, uh, I have to do it. It's, it's always uncomfortable to listen, but I think it like really helps. The old stuff sometimes is valuable. You know, you're like, oh, maybe there was some sauce I had there that I left along the way and I want to get that back. And then even just listening to the new stuff. It allows me to like organize the ideas in a better way, you know. Yeah, it makes me it uncomfortable. sucks. Yeah, it I can't, sucks. I can't. But you got to do it to get better. Yeah, it makes me uncomfortable because I suck and the content, bro. That's why I'm so glad for deep fakes because anything that ever comes out about me that's old is deep fake. It's not even real. That's deep fake. That shit don't exist. That's deep. That shit never happened. The tweets, the audio. That's all deep fakes, bro. I don't care if you see me saying it. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real, bro. It's not real. That wasn't me. It's not real. That wasn't me. What else we got, Taylor? What else we got, Taylor? Mm -mm. Ooh. Mm -mm. Charlie Marciano says, when was the last time you challenged your beliefs? That's a good question. The last time I challenged my beliefs. Give me an example of that. I I I challenge mine every day. Yeah, but what is an example of like a belief? Issue? Um, probably something you believe in religious religion wise, or even just a stance you might have on something. You yeah. know what I mean? You would like flip on abortion. Yeah, I try to uh, I try to challenge the things that I believe constantly because yeah. like, that's where like the funny is like making the arguments for both sides and then seeing like where I settle. Right. But, but yeah, no, I had, um, the, I, I had my beliefs challenged in terms of like the way I think not only politics, but like, uh, Hollywood, I think a lot of industries work. Whereas before I thought that there was like a group of powerful people that were pushing out the information and ideology that they believed in. And now I think that it's really more, which, which tended to be more liberal. And now I think it's really more about people afraid of losing their job. And I think the way that you behave when you're afraid of losing your job is accepting of everybody because it's very hard to get fired for being accepting, right? right? Like nobody's ever like, that guy's way too accepting. We got to get him out of here. So it's not like there's this political agenda in these spaces. It's the agenda is I don't want to get fired because my kids are in private school and I have a home with a mortgage, which is completely understandable. And so so you just play it a little bit safe at work. Um, and, and that made me have a little bit more empathy for the decisions that are made in these industries and made me realize that the way that you're actually going to create transformative art is you have to kind of make it yourself first and prove it's successful, and the success is the safety. So once, you know, we make an R-rated comedy a huge hit, then all the studios will go, okay, you can be edgy, and you can make R-rated comedies, and we won't get fired. Okay, green light an R-rated comedy. But they're not going to be the first ones to do it, because like all human beings, they want to protect themselves. I'll challenge that belief a little bit. Okay, please. I'll challenge that belief a little bit, and I will say that in order to make great, Art, you have to take risk. Oh, I, you know what I mean? That, oh, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I don't... Oh, that, okay. What I'm saying yeah. is they're not willing to take the risk, but so in order to create it, you have to do it independently and prove it's successful. And once it's successful, that risk is no longer there. Oh, got you. I get you what, see what I'm saying. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, our, our great friend Jazz Fly, Jasmine Waters, God bless the dead, she yeah. would always say, you can either be great or you can be safe. You can't be you can't both. Be both. And I and I, I truly feel that way. You can't be you either can be great or you can be safe. You can not be both, especially in a world in the world of art. You know what I'm 100%. saying? Like you got to take chances. You got to take risks. Will risk. Smith was great and and safe. No, I don't think there was anything safe about Will Smith because 
You got to think about when Will Smith first came up. I know it's easy for us to say that, but everything Will Smith did, somebody took a risk. To take a rapper and put him as the star of a sitcom on oh, yeah. NBC, that, I'm saying, that was a risk. To take that rapper and then start putting him in blockbuster films, that was a risk. Like every time, every time Will Smith was starring in these films, it was a risk. And it was almost like a wonder every time he would do it. Like, oh my God, he got another number one? Whoa, wait a minute. This shit with aliens is number one now? Or, oh, this shit with him playing a drunk superhero is number one? Like all of this shit was a risk, a risk, a risk. And sometimes those risks didn't pay off. He had 10 straight number ones yeah. of risk taking. And then he had like five flops in a row. You know what I mean? But everything yeah. about Will Smith was a risk. I think when we, when we think safe, sometimes we just think content. But no, think about the risk that a studio was taking. And he's black. He's, he's a black rapper <laughs> that you're putting in these blockbuster films. Like nobody thought that shit wasn't po- on paper. That shit not supposed to work. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Black Panther was a risk. I, Bob Iger said that himself. Bob Iger said, and I, I was a, it was a podcast that he did. I forgot who he did it with. Bob Iger said that if they would have followed what you're saying, like that uh, safe model of of what of what a lot of executives did, he said if they would have followed that, they would have never even made Black Panther. Mm-hmm. They would have never made. There's nothing about it that even says make this film. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, make it do it the way it should be done. Black cast, black director, black writers, and it's a billion dollar, you know, mm. business. So, yeah, like Jazz, like you and Jazz are saying, basically, you know, you can either be safe or you can be great, but you you, you can't, can't be both. both. But I challenge my beliefs all the time just by simply listening to both sides. Like, yep. I don't just, t- like, I just don't take my feelings. Like, okay, like, we talk about the Chappelle thing. I can hear it and be like, all right, that was funny. But then if I see somebody say, oh, it's normalizing anti-Semitism, I don't just dismiss it. I want to know why they feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I want my feelings respected the same way. And then yeah. when I hear what they say, I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it don't mean I have an opinion on it either way. I can just understand why Dave felt the need to say what he said. And I understand why, you know, Jewish people can be offended by it. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. As simple as that. But that's how I challenge my beliefs. Because you can, you, and I don't even think it's about beliefs. It's about feelings sometimes. Challenging your feelings. Yep. 100%. Let's do one more, Taylor Gang. And then get up out of here because I got to go do Sherry Shepard show. Oh, Sherry Shepard. Yeah, I'm going to Sherry today. Why do I know that? She used to be on The View. Now she's taking, she took over Wendy Williams' show. We already a- answered a question from Charlie Marciano. You only get one, Charlie. Oh, you know what? I will. You know what? This will be the final question because this is a good one. Can you teach accountability? Because there's a question that I've been asking the past couple of weeks. I ask it a lot of different ways. Um, I say, what do N-words hate more? Reading our accountability. What I say, the broaden it, what do people hate more? Yeah. Reading our accountability. In 2022, going into 2023, what do you think people hate more? Reading our accountability. Accountability. Definitely accountability. Yeah. Nobody tough. wants accountability. It's tough, man. Being Why? accountable is tough. Yeah, because it forces you to look at what you've done that's wrong. You know, it forces you to reflect on like kind of who you are and yeah. how you treated a person. And yeah. and a lot of times we don't want to believe that we're the type of person to treat someone like that. Yeah. So we reject the accountability because we have to reflect on a part of ourselves or a moment of ourselves that was like really fucked up. Like uh you know, not really fucked up, or just like uh, unsavory. You know, like you know, it's funny. Like when my wife and I uh, argue uh, about stuff. Like for me, it's very easy for me to just say I'm sorry, right? If I know I fucked up, it's very easy for me to just go, yeah, I'm sorry. Like because I view my fuck up as a momentary lapse in who I am, right? My wife views an apology as a defining moment in who she is. So it's harder for her to apologize because it's her going, well, then that's, you're going to think that's who I am as a person. Mm. And I'm going, no, no, no. I know who you are as a person. Mm. That moment, you just weren't that, which we all cannot be that. And you apologizing is just going, hey, I wasn't myself for a moment. You not apologizing is making me feel like that you believe that behavior is okay to always do, which is really frustrating. It's like as soon as I get an apology, it's thrown out the window. But now I understand why that's tougher for her, for her because she's believing that people like me or anybody else that she's apologizing to is going to view her as 
as that unsavory behavior. Does that make sense? I get what you're saying. So it, I don't know. It's just really funny. That's like interesting. Though. The different ways that people look at, at accountability. Apologies show me that you're not that person. That, that's how I look at it. Yeah. But what if you what if you view the apology as like acknowledgement that you are that that a flaw. bad thing, nah. that flaw? Yeah. Like I, so, I could see why that's so much harder. So it's really been like it's been me communicating to her. No, no, I know who you are. I love you. You're, you're, apolo- we, you're apologizing because you made a mistake, exactly. not, because you, not because you, you are, are a mistake. You are a mistake, yes. Yeah. But I can see how if there are people that are like that, it's harder for them to to give up that apology. And it's, yeah. I don't know, I thought that was kind of a really cool thing. And, and maybe, maybe people who struggle with accountability, maybe that's how they feel. And I guess I would say that to them too, that it's like, everybody's gonna make mistakes. Just, we are human beings, we are flawed. And, apologizing for those mistakes isn't only for you. It's to let the other person that loves you and trusts you know that that isn't who you are. That's right. That's like right. that you don't think that that's okay. That's right. I'm telling you, it's, it's when you don't get an apology. When somebody does some fuck shit to yeah, you it sucks, and they man. don't apologize, it's because number one, either they don't think they're wrong or number two, they just feel like they can do that to people. And that and that is, it makes you feel unsafe with that person. Absolutely. Yeah. And, make, and I'll cut you off. Right. Straight up. Yeah. People that cannot take accountability for their bullshit, I'll cut you off. You blame everybody else. That's if you're never the problem, if everybody else is the problem, like, come on, bro. Yeah. Like, stop it. Knock it off. Don't you think that's part of the hardest part of being a parent sometimes? Is teaching accountability? Well, it, Ooh. that's a great question. It's easier sometimes just to be like, all right, I told you how to clean your room to go out. Now you want to leave. I just don't want to deal with this shit. Just go uh, and get out of my hair. But I'm also like, no, got to teach these kids a lesson yeah. that if they don't do something, that they that's don't right. Get yeah, they yeah. don't get that's something. Right. That's right. It's hard. It's yeah. hard for me. It's hard for me because you know, like what Show said earlier, I'm pussy. Right. My yeah. wife is way tougher. Well, I'm than pussy I am. too, man. I'm pussy three. You know. Yeah, we're pussy three. We're three <laughs> pussies. Three. We're three blind pussies. <laughs> three, three blind pussies. <laughs> <laughs> we really three are. Well, pussy. let's shave them, man, yeah. so we can see. <laughs> All right, three blind pussies. But no, it's like with my, my, my kids. I'm like on some, you know, I'll act like I'm no TV. Right. And then. Or, no, you're not going. Then you see their faces. And they're like, like yeah. God damn it. I know it's because I have daughters. Yeah. I know it's because I have daughters. I don't know, man. Sometimes I think my parents were so evil. Not my parents, but my dad. You know what I mean? Because they were tough. Yo, they really didn't let us do shit. Like what? When they would take shit away, they would take it away. Oh, really? Yeah. When you were grounded, you were really grounded. When it was ass cutting time, you was really, I don't even hit my kids. Really? I was getting hit with extension cords and wooden spoons off the kitchen wall and everything. Anything your parents can get your hands on. Like, really? ah, man, please. I don't know what kind of kids I'm raising. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, it's real. I don't know, bro. I don't know if they, I mean, I, I do know that they all going to have manners. They're very respectful. That's good. And I don't feel entitlement. That's good. I don't see the entitlement. But when they tell me no, that's crazy. They really mean no. Like, for example, anything. When I be like, go do such and such, no. Why not? Because I don't want to. When I say no, my no is shaky. <laughs> right. <laughs> my no is negotiable. Their no means no. Like, God damn. Why is this not how it's supposed to be? Yeah. Why am I explaining to my three-year-old that I'm the father? (laughs) That when I tell you to do something and your mom tells you to do something, this is what it's supposed to be. They hit you with, I don't give you consent to do that? No, I ain't got that shit. That's some school (laughs) shit. That's 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 that that pronoun shit. They teaching that in school along with new pronouns. They say it with like, oh, But your kids are old. How was your oldest? 15 and 13. Yeah, I got a, my oldest is 14. I don't give you consent to do that. Like, go to your room. No, no, no. Like, I'll tickle them. You know, I tried to tickle my oldest daughter. The Jesus other day. Christ. Like, I don't give you consent to touch me. Man, can I you imagine like, doing that in what? public? <laughs> Chris, imagine, imagine doing that to your daughter in public and somebody hears it. Right. <laughs> you probably get arrested on the spot. It's like a joke. Yeah. They're saying it like. They're being joke, tongue in cheek. But they know that that's they've a been tool. taught that wow. they have something to say. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. That's a good ass way to get out of tickling. I'm not gonna lie. I don't give you kids that to do that. Yeah, man. I just, I don't. Being a parent is hard in 2022, bro. Hey, <laughs> it really is. But a blessing, hopefully. It's definitely a blessing. Hopefully, Keep hopefully. shooting, show. You know me. Uh, as it, always, one thing you know about me. <laughs> 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 ha, big Schultzy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> As always. You. <laughs> yeah, you really mean that? You can't some call somebody wild pussy. Yeah. And then, you know, say, I love you, bro. Why not? I love you, bro. But it's different. Why? Because we're pussy together. We some sloppy <laughs> pussies, bro. <laughs> Blind, you and me, sloppy, blind, pussy. sloppy ass. Jesus pussy, bro. Christ! That's all I'm doing. I'm Philly just... pussy. R yes, <laughs> yes, oh, <wow>. yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Dripping like a cheese steak. Uh. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? That's a bar. Pussy dripping like a cheesesteak. Uh. What? 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 That lower Darby pussy. Yo, come on, man. Mm. Mm. Gotta lick that lower Marion and that upper Marion. You know what I mean? Come on. As always, if you listen to this podcast, Yo. you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit. You're right, too. It's the Brilliant News Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace. <laughs>